Well, good day and welcome back. Well, so the other day my wife said, hey, Joe, there's a typewriter for you out in the truck. I said, typewriter? Well, it turns out my younger grandson, I had given him a typewriter maybe three or more years ago and I completely forgot about it. I went out to the truck. There was this little case. Oh, yeah, the case is held together with a web belt, kind of a military style belt. I immediately recognize it. Okay, the zipper's shot in the case. But I knew it was not a letter of 22. Those are common to have broken zippers. But anyways, it turned out to be this Remington 1040. I had completely forgotten about this machine and it needed some work. And so I think it's a good time to talk about the Remington 1040. Stay tuned. The Remington 1040. It is a nice looking medium sized portable typewriter. I say medium sized. The footprint of the machine is actually rather small. It's closer to a letter of 22 in terms of width and depth, but it is taller and considerably heavier. I like this cream colored finish on it. It really is a solid typewriter. So as I was studying this typewriter, starting to get familiar with it, putting it through its paces with some test typing, of course I noticed that it needed some serious degreasing. So I took it out to my workshop and proceeded to give it a healthy degreasing with lacquer thinner and alcohol. And some of these type bars needed extra treatment to get unclogged. But finally I got it so it was reliable. I went through and started compiling a list of features. Like I had totally forgotten about this machine and so I thought it was worth listing. What does it have going for it? How does it compare to other medium sized portables, at least portables on the smaller end of things? So first of all, carriage release levers on both sides, both left and right sides. That's a nice feature. How about half line spacing? So click, click. Each click of the line spacing ratchet is a half line. That's a good feature. How about one, one and a half, two, two and a half, and three line spacing? So that is a nice feature. So you have a lot of line spacing features with this typewriter. How about a bichrome? Check, it has bichrome setting. That's very good. How about a key set tabulator? Yes, it has tabs and they're set and cleared here. That's a good feature because not every small typewriter has those. It has an American style keyboard and a number one, so a more modern keyboard. That's great. How about a touch regulator? Well, it turns out there is an orange knob here and you can adjust the touch of the machine. And it basically does the same as most other touch regulators. It's adjusting the tension on the universal bar. How about the ability to manually reverse the ribbon? Well, it has that. It has a lever right here you can move to manually reverse the ribbon if you wish to. How about temporary and permanent line spacing variables? Well, this lever right here is the temporary line spacing variable, whereas the center button on the middle of the left platen knob is the permanent line spacing variable. It has both of them. How about a folding or articulating carriage return lever? It folds down into that position. That's a great feature to have. How about a positive carriage lock right here? Positive locking to protect the escapement. That's a great feature. How about an easily removable ribbon cover? You can open up the ribbon cover and then flex the linkages and take off the cover very easily. You can operate the machine without the cover in place. And then when it's time to put the cover back on, just flex that linkage and get the two arms and the little holes on the side there. Very easy. And how about segment shifting? Yes. So I'm not very impressed with the case of this typewriter. It is a kind of a soft case. I mean, it has a little bit of firmness to it, but it's basically synthetic material over a kind of cardboard like internal frame. The bottom of the case is not hard and rigid. It's also flexible. And because of that, the zippers break on these and I'm using 
a military style web belt just to keep the case together. The rear of it basically ripped out. It's just a cloth section that goes over here, holds the top to the bottom. And I used some gaffers tape to try to secure that so the top doesn't completely detach from the bottom. So the cases themselves are kind of the weak spot of these typewriters. However, I find the typewriter itself is pretty solidly built. It has a cast alloy chassis. Uh, it's really heavy. It reminds me of a lot of the other well-built European machines in that regard. Not a lot of stamped sheet metals that bend easy. When I was taking this apart to service it, to degrease it, I wanted to take the entire white body shell off. But you can't. You can take the screws you remove and the front and sides kind of pull out, but the back of the machine won't release because the rails for the carriage bearings are in the way. So I think, and if I'm mistaken, correct me below in the comments, but I think on this machine you have to actually remove the carriage to get the body shell off. So I didn't want to go to that degree of complexity just to do a degreasing on this machine, and so instead I just took the cover off, as I showed you earlier, and I protected the keyboard, the panels, the whole carriage with rags, with cloths, and then I was able to protect it so I could use my heavy solvents like lacquer thinner to degrease the mechanism. And that worked pretty well. So there's a couple things I like about this machine and a couple things I don't like. So one of the things I do like is the paper bale has a really heavy spring, and it looks like it will hold a stiffer piece of card material, like even a postcard, it'll hold it down nice and tight, and that's a good thing. Uh, one of the things I didn't like, necessarily, is the fact that it does not have a paper support finger of any kind. And so, when you do roll a sheet of paper into the machine, it will tend to flop down and maybe drag on your table. So what I discovered is you take a stiff card stock, a piece of like an index card, and if you stick it in the gap between the margin settings here, that acts like its own paper finger. So that's my little hack or my little fix for that is to use a stiff piece of card stock. It functions as a de facto paper support finger. And of course, when you're done with that, you can always pull it out. Now, while we're talking about likes and dislikes, one of the things I don't like about this typewriter is the fact that it uses Remington spools. What that means is the actual spool is a metal ring with the ribbon wrapped around it, and there are no rims that make up a full-size spool. You have this plastic support down here that's part of the typewriter that it sits on, the ribbon goes in the slot here. Yes, my fingers are inky now. And then you have a plastic top part that's also part of the typewriter, and it goes like that. So when you do buy or get new ribbons for these typewriters, you either have to buy a specific Remington type spool, or you take your old one, unravel the ribbon off of the metal ring, save the metal ring, and then like what I did is I loaded fresh Baco ribbon on the metal ring. And to do that, um, it's best to actually do it in the typewriter. So you want to set up the reversing so the spool free wheels, and then connect your reel of Baco to that rim and then have the Baco reel sitting off to the side of the typewriter at the same level as the machine's reel is and then you can manually spin it and wind it on. And that's really the only real way to load this from bulk ribbon supply if you don't want to buy preloaded Remington ribbons. And the problem with a lot of times buying preloaded ribbons is you end up with ribbons that aren't necessarily very dark. Because as you know, if you buy a bulk reel of ribbon from a place like Baco Ribbon Supply, you get really dark, well-inked ribbons, and that's what I always like doing. Okay, so I did have a problem with the ribbon prematurely reversing off of the left spool when it was nowhere near to the end of the spool. It turned out to be this spring here was a little weak, and the way this works is 
when the spring where this lever is on the right side of this little V in the spring, then it feeds onto the left spool like that. And then when it pops over to the other side, it this becomes the supply side and the right side is the drive. And it turned out this spring was just a little bit weak and this lever was popping over the bend in the spring too easy. The correct way to adjust this spring would be if you can take the uh, plastic body panels off, there's a screw you access on the left side to loosen the screw that the spring wraps around and you can move the spring or pivot it so it's a little bit more this way. But because I couldn't take the body off, I couldn't do that. So I ended up um, just bending the spring a little bit, giving it a little bit more tension, and that seems to have fixed the problem. Also, I should point out, this is the uh, touch adjustment, and all it is is a variable spring pressure that you're pu pushing on this, which controls the amount of tension on the universal bar. While we're in the machine, I should also point out to you that one of the other things I didn't like about it is when the ribbon cover is in place, it would rattle and make a clanky noise when it was typing. And I put on this layer of adhesive craft foam, something like two millimeters thick. It has an adhesive backing and you can buy these in sheets at the craft store. I just cut this about maybe four millimeters wide, stuck it to the edge here, and now the ribbon cover sits nice and even and it doesn't vibrate or make a rattling noise when you're typing. So I think the keys on the Remington 1040 are modern looking, but they're very attractive. So the keys all have a depression in the middle for your fingertip. And they're roughly square, but there's curves. There's a curve to the front edge of the key. The sides are straight. And then the back two corners kind of have a round off on them. So they're very kind of unusual shaped. They kind of remind me of Chiclets brand chewing gum, the little square chewing gum pieces. These always remind me of that. So I noticed the keys are quite well made. The letter parts are double shot, so they're molded with their own darker color of plastic instead of just being painted in. And the backspace key is on the left side, and of course that means that the margin release key is on the right side, just above the tabulator key. So this typewriter is made in Holland, but I'm quite impressed with the way it types, actually. And that brings to the point that we should probably do a test typing and show you a typing sample. So as far as the size of the type on this machine, I typed 66 characters and then I measured the width of it as 137 millimeters, which equates to 12.24 characters per inch. So it's a little bit smaller than what we would call elite size in imperial size typewriter measurements. So this is a half space machine, meaning that, for instance, when I press the space bar down, it moves half a character space. When I release it, it moves the other character space. The same thing with typing any character. When the type bar moves up to the print position, it moves the carriage a half a space, and when you release it, it moves it the other half. So here's a shot of the underneath side of the machine. You can see the cast metal chassis with the molding marks here. Very dense and well-made chassis. It's not made of sheet metal at all. Well, let's weigh this beauty and see how much it weighs. I don't know if my kitchen scale can handle it. 5194 grams or 11 pounds 7.3 ounces. Rather hefty for the size. Another nice thing about the Remington designs is they have a lot of adjustments. See these adjustment screws? There's a lot of adjustments built around the escapement and other uh, adjustments inside the machine instead of bending metal like you do on some brands like Smith Corona's often oftentimes a lot of screw adjustments so it's possible to really set up this machine to factory specs well in my experience these Remington 1040s aren't all that common around these parts as they say but it surprised me when I got this typewriter back after a few years I liked it better than I probably did back when I first had it of course, it's working better. It's been properly degreased, and that makes a big difference, obviously. Well, it probably could use eventually a new platen roller, but it's really not all that hard right now. 
So if you're looking for a medium-sized portable, let's say a portable on the smaller end of the scale, Remington 1040s are interesting machines because they're so full-featured. They have all the features of a bigger size portable in a smaller package. Well, they're a little heavy. They're not a nine or eight pound typewriter, but they're pretty solidly built. So if you see one of these, you might want to consider looking at it a little bit closer. I really have enjoyed using this now that I have it fixed up. And of course, I hope to be able to use it more for some private journal writing or maybe writing letters when I need a smaller typeface. Sometimes it's fun to type letters or notes with a smaller size typeface. This would be a good machine for that or for any other creative aspect of writing. And as always, I wish you the very best. Stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye bye for now.